This is cred.ai, cred.ai, as in credit, except for it doesn't have the IT. So just cred.ai. It's a really cool credit card. No credit check, doesn't cost you anything, no annual fee, no monthly fee that you got to pay them to report. I've seen some of these credit cards charge as much as $100 a month, $1,200 a year to simply report. So this one has no annual fee, no monthly fee, no interest, no credit check. How does it work? You open up a bank account with this company. You put money in your bank account. They send you a debit card that looks like a credit card, that works like a credit card, but it's actually a debit card. And they report it to the credit bureaus as a credit card. So you get a $1,500 credit limit, no credit check, no annual fees, no interest. Works like a debit card, shows up like a credit card. This should have a, for some of you, will actually have a very large increase in your credit score. So what you want to do to get this card is you want to just click on the upper right hand corner of sign up now. Upper right hand corner, you're going to click sign up now. When you get there, it's going to ask you for your phone number. You're going to put in your phone number and then it's going to text you a code. You then put in the six digit code to verify that it's really your cell phone number. And then you answer the questions. Then it's going to ask you for your special code, not the one they texted you, but the one that you're going to get from me. So Chastney, if you could load that up, the special code, the FFB six, whatever, six K something, this code is what's going to allow you to not have an inquiry. So when you go there and you put in your information, you apply for the credit card, you apply as in you fill out the application, you're going to get it, but you're going to put in this special code, RFFPKJ, RFFPKJ. That's going to bypass the inquiry, so there is no inquiry on your credit. No annual fee, no monthly fee, no interest, no credit check. If you use the special code RFFPKJ. If you're watching this on a replay, it's cred.ai. Upper right hand corner, click on sign up now. When you get there, it's going to look like this. Really straightforward. I'll, I'll scroll through. It's a metal credit card, just like that. It's got a little unicorn on it. They kind of they're tying into Stark and um, other things. It's just a fun debit card that it is. You got fifty five thousand free ATMs nationwide. You do get two hundred fifty thousand dollars of FDC FDIC insurance, and you can read about this in here. Comes in a little case like that. Shows up. Pull the credit card out. Click the sign up now button at the very bottom or the upper right hand corner. Again, no credit check, no inquiry, no annual fee, no monthly fee. That simple. Okay. If you don't have at least three credit cards on your credit report right now that are not overutilized, so if your credit utilization rate is over 5%, and you don't have, and or, you don't have at least three credit cards, you want to get one of these unicorn cards. Uh, you can figure out what your utilization rate is if you go to creditmojo.com. Right-hand side, click on score boost. When you click on score boost, it'll tell you what your utilization rate is. If it's over 5%, you need to get one of these cards. Because it's going to add a $1,500 credit limit to your credit file, which will then lower your utilization rate. It works like a debit card. You put money into the bank account. You swipe it like a, a debit or credit card. So it, it is a debit card that gets reported as a credit card. All right. So last Thursday, and now I'm doing these twice a month, first and third Thursday of the month. So first and third Thursday. And... Um, Last time I was on, 
we were talking about what you can do to really manage your debt. And just to recap, you need to know how much money you're making to figure out a budget. And then you need to know how much money you're spending to keep inside that budget. Once you figure out how much you make and once you figure out how much you're spending, you now can set aside a percentage. Most people do not do any savings. In fact, I think the stat is like almost 80% of Americans have less than $500 or $1,000 in their bank account, in their savings account. Less than 1000 bucks, and we're the richest country in the world. We're the richest people in the world. And yet we have the least amount of savings because we just spend it all. Yes, on the advanced financial stuff that I teach, I say keep your savings low and use your credit. But if you don't have the credit, you need to have the savings. So once you figure out how much you make, you can then figure out how much you're spending, create your budget, and then create your savings plan, and then implement your savings plan, even if it's only 1%. Because if you save 1% of what you make, by the end of the year, you'll have more money than you started. I know that sounds really basic. And I grew up really poor. No running water, no electricity. The only thing I was taught about money was it was the root of all evil, which is not. Money's not the root of all evil. The love of money could be considered the root of all evil, but it's not money. Money is just a tool. Money is no different than this remote control. I mean, it's a tool. I can turn on the TV over there or it can sit here and do nothing. Money is just a tool to help you do things. And some people will say that, you know, money can't buy happiness. Money's not everything. Well, if money's not everything, try living without it. It's like saying oxygen is not everything. Just try to go without it. Try to go with water. Try to go without food. Try to go without oxygen. Money is extremely important. In fact, for the Christians here on the call, I'm one myself. There are more verses about money than any other subject in the entire Bible. Over 2,000 verses about money. More than anything else. Obviously, whoever wrote the Bible, it was pretty important to them. Now, I'm not going to get into the debate about the Bible is written by men and blah, 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 but because that doesn't really matter. There's more verses in the Bible right now. The one that we have, there's more verses about money than anything else. Over 2,000 different verses. Because look, money's not everything, but it's pretty damn close to being everything. And they say that money can't buy happiness. I disagree. Money can buy happiness. Doesn't mean that if you have money, you're happy. But money can allow you to buy things, do things, help other people, make a difference in other people's lives that you normally could not do without money. Listen. If you had all the money in the world, if you were Elon Musk and you had no cares and you sold everything else, you had billions of dollars, would that make you happy? No. But you know what would make you happy? Giving away billions and billions of dollars to other people, making a difference, seeing their smile, helping out the less fortunate. That can make you happy. So money can make you happy. Money can buy happiness. So I learned as a kid that the only way to get rich really was to steal it, was to rip people off, lie. That's not true, by the way. Or win the lottery. And that's not, that's not a good thing either. And I realized something a long time ago. And that is, if you don't save now, when you're broke as a joke, you'll never save money. If you're not saving money right now when you don't have any money, you will never save money when you have it. You know why? 
Because when you start making more money, you'll spend more money. And you'll re you will just add more expense. If you drive a little bit nicer car, you have a little bit nicer house, you go to a little bit nicer restaurants, a little more often than normal. As your income increases, your expenses increases. It is extremely rare that the income goes up here and the expenses stay down there. That just doesn't happen. Think about it. The last time you got a raise. Remember how excited you were about it? Like, I just got a raise. I got a 2% raise. That's probably been a while. I just got a raise. And then you get the raise. And a couple weeks later, you're still, you're right back to the same old paycheck to paycheck. So it's really important to figure out how much money you make, figure out how much money, where you're spending it, figure out a savings plan, and then start saving. Before you ever start paying off debt, you save first. You get your savings account established and the percentage established first. Then you start paying off debt. Because after all, it's you doing all the work to make the money. It's you that's sacrificing your life. It's you that's trading your life for dollars. All of us do it. All of us trade our life for dollars. How unfair and unfortunate is it that you trade your life for dollars and then you pay other people first? Always pay yourself first, even if it's only 1%. Now, I want you to work that up until you can get into the double and triple or the double ditches, 20, 30, 40%. But in the beginning, we got to start with one. And if you can't live off of 1% less than what you're making now, you're lying to yourself. Because I guarantee there's somebody in your neighborhood makes 10% less than you, and they're probably living the same lifestyle you are. Maybe they can go to Starbucks one day less a month. So it's really important that you start putting at least 1% away. And then next month, maybe do 2%. And the following month, maybe do 3%. What else can you cut out? Not saying to cut everything out. Cut out one piece at a time. And next thing you know, if you did that every month, just add 1% to it. By the end of this year, you're at 10%. Start 1% in January, 2% in February. Start increase it. Next thing you know, you're at 10% by the end of the year. And if you just stayed at 10%, depending on your age, but by the time you're my age, in your 50s, you're sitting on a pretty nice little retirement if invested properly. And you follow my advice on the tax strategies and my advice on Fortress Banking. Let me show you this. I want all of you to go in because I was earlier today I was talking about Fortress Banking with all the Platinum clients. This is my uh, this is my real studio. It's just a picture of it. Tonight I'm just doing a green screen because it's really cold here in Idaho, as it's cold everywhere. This is actually a hanger. It's a real hanger. This is actually my real cars. That is my real Ferrari. That is my real Toyota Tundra in the back. That's my real airplane. And then that's my Jeep right there. These are my real vehicles. These are not just something I grabbed from Instagram. These are pictures we Photoshopped and we put in the hanger. My hanger's not this big, but it's real. Now, why I brought that up is that Ferrari, when I bought that in April 20, April 2018, it was a 12-year loan, and it was going to take me 12 years to pay it off if I made the minimum payments, which meant be 2030 by the time I would pay it off. 2030. I just paid the loan off. It's now paid off. I don't know, five and a half months early. I did not make extra payments. 
I simply made the minimum payment just as I was required. The difference is I applied the Fortress Banking system, which then eliminated almost six years of interest, saved me tens of thousands of dollars. And you can do the same thing with your vehicles. I'm doing the same thing on the truck, the same thing on the Jeep and the airplane. The airplane's actually a 20 year loan and it should be paid off by the end of this year, which will be the 11th year that I've had that airplane. Again, 50% faster, saving a substantial amount of interest by simply using the Fortress banking system that's inside of Fortress University that you have access to. It will save you 70% of the interest on any loan, student loans, mortgages, car loans, or any other type of loan. If you simply go and apply what I teach inside the Fortress University.